We all go a little mad sometimes. Be afraid. Be very afraid. They're here. Hi, I'm Lee, and that's not your fucking baby! You stole her! <laughs> and I'm Nathan, and excuse me, sir, you mind getting the fuck out of my way? <laughs> and you're listening to They're, They're here. here Podcast. A discussion. Dissection. A disembowelment. Sometimes. <laughs> well, there's hard. one in this one. Yeah. <laughs> We don't get to see it, though. I remember this it's movie being a little bit more... Graphic? Yeah. 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 And you're listening to... They're here. Oh. We already did we that. We sure did. Um, <laughs> we sure are. <laughs> so, yeah. Today, we are doing uh, Michael Bay's Texas Chainsaw 20... <laughs> we are sure listening to that. I feel like this is a big one amongst people our age, though. I'll be honest. I saw this film before I saw the original. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to pretext it by saying I'm not going to try and make a massive comparison between this and its predecessor. Oh, stop. You can't not. It's borderline shot for shot. A some bits. It's the exact bitch. same story. Some bits. It's the exact same story. Uh, in ways. In almost every way. In some ways. In like 90% of ways. I'd say a good 80%, not 90. I would say like 90. I'd say 80. I actually think you're a liar. I think you're a stupid, wrong, filthy liar. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't take away from my enjoyment of this. I fucking love this movie. I don't think. I think it's somewhat more entertaining than the original. Um, um, but the yeah. original one to me is like, I don't know, it just feels gross. Like it feels nasty. I also think this one feels pretty nasty. I don't know. I think it feels like a music video. Well, yeah, because it was written and directed by Michael Bay. And I Michael know, Flash. But see, this to me feels gross in the same way the first Transformers movie does. Oh, where it's like everything yeah. has like a layer of like oil and dirt all Sweat. over it. Whereas like, I feel like the actual physical film for Toby Hooper, like uh, if I held up that film strip. It would have grease stripping off filthy. of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, I don't know. I think they're two very, very different movies. Um, to me, it's impossible to not make comparisons, but I don't mean that. Wait, I'm hold like on. A... Is it 90% or is it two different movies? Make up your mind. It's two different movies because they look very different. Even though the cinematographer returned from the original for this movie. Um, I think this movie is kind of the Rob Zombification of yes, absolutely. Uh, Texas Chainsaw. Like I feel like Michael Bay saw House of a Thousand Corpses and was like, "Hmm." You even get guitar riffs in parts of the soundtrack. Yeah, for sure. Which is really good, especially when um, uh, Leatherface uh, Thomas Brown Hewitt uh, yeah. is like gotten up at camper. Like you can hear like these like guitar riffs and shit, and the guy that like beheaded guy that's sitting on a silver platter with fruit is actually the uh, sound it, technician. It sure is. But also that to me was such an obvious like look, look at this because it's like this perfectly clean head. Mm -hmm. You know, like primped hair and everything. Mm -hmm. Just like sitting there. Hey, not yeah. in the fucking photo from the previous family. So it's like, who the fuck is that? Where the <laughs> fuck did he pass through? <laughs> you know? Um... But I don't know. I feel like this is one of those that's like iconic for our age group because I feel like this came out at around the time where people our age would have been kind of allowed to start like exploring horror, like new horror movies and mm -hmm, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, this one had me really curious because like the cover, I'm like, that looks like Frankenstein. Like, yeah. What the fuck is oh, that? it's great. I love it's that. just all this stitched together and like his face is green on the cover. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like human or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, directed by Michael Bay. Uh-huh. Now, obviously his career sort of slid off towards the later end of the decade. But I gotta say, his, like, he started with, like, music videos and hard rock videos and things like that. And he did it very, very well. And Toby Hooper gave it his blessing. And he obviously saw something in him. And it works really, really well. I gotta say, like, the level of dedication that was there on set in order to ensure that uh, the legacy, not necessarily uh, preserved, but, like, sort of, uh, uh, you know, 
kept going. Wise, they had you Daniel Pearlback from the original, who was the original yep. cinematographer. And I got um, to admit, they look beautiful. Comple- they, yeah, they look completely different. It's um, so muted and um, sepia tones, everything. I think that does bother me though, because really? it's, it's like a little, it's a little bland in like color palette. Whereas like the original one, I think is like gorgeous because mm. it's like, like during the day you get that like blue blue sky and like um, like the, the red, red of the dirt. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then like when the sun starts to go down, you really get that like like vivid orange color. Mm. I think like mm. that first original movie is like one of the. Like, kind of unironically, one of the more, like, beautiful movies. Yeah. Like, from that decade. Um, but with this, I don't know, everything is a little too, like, borderline, like, metallic looking. Really? Like, I feel like they've left a lot of, like, um, I feel like this could have done with one or two more passes of colour. Mm-hmm. It just, everything feels a bit, like, silver or, I don't know, yeah, like, borderline metallic. Now, you see, that's where I would disagree. I think I love the sort of browns and the dulled out colour of a lot of things ironically the blood is really really red which i love what are like black um, points, though? yeah exactly like it, it comes across uh I, I personally i think the vision that they had for the film did really really well and i think some of the shots are just fucking beautiful like uh, the weird ones are like him like you know you know sewing Kemper's face together or like the back <laughs> illuminated shots of the house when that shot happened when you see him sewing I was like ha ah, me <laughs> I, like, ah, I do that um, I will say yeah I loved the now this movie for some reason it didn't bother me but it kind of stood out to me last night with the use of like very unnatural like unrealistic lighting mm-hmm. where I'm like what's lighting the back of that house yeah you know or some like early army in the van where I'm like what's lighting him from directly underneath to make him look like a skeleton mm-hmm. when it's not uh, lighting fucking what's his name again um Morgan Disco Stew yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, no, like, it, it is it is gorgeous, though. Like, uh, again, it didn't bother me too much because this film is, like, very stylized or whatever. Uh-huh. But, um, I don't know. There are certain things about this movie where it's just kind of like, the fuck? Mm-hmm. Or, like, there are certain cuts in this movie where it was just, like, Leatherface comes out of nowhere, but it's, like, the shot keys in a frame or two after he's jumped in. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like this movie is edited a little bit choppy. In a way, which I guess like is kind of intentional, but like it kind of throws me off every once in a while. But that doesn't take away from like my enjoyment. Like I actually like the expansion of the lore of the the Hewitts in this family, not the Sawyers. Now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I like the expansion of the lore and that like everybody's in on it, and that there's the family kind of spreads out a little bit more. We get that woman, the the tea lady, like the skinny yeah. tea lady. Mm-hmm. They always really creeped me out when I was younger. Um, and I'm pretty She's sure she lying. is the mother of Jedediah. Yeah. Because they look exactly alike. And then the bigger of the two women... Bertha or whatever. ...is Leatherface's mama daddy. No. Well, that's what you get from the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. She dies. Does she? Yeah. Mm. She's just a fatty... <laughs> <laughs> well if i may this is where i view each of these different it's a different universe it's a different iteration of leatherface his family how everything works um obviously the sawyers are very very vividly ingrained in your mind and when it turns around it's called the hewitts you have totally different expectations and i also love the fact that there's expansion on making the other characters just as evil as Leatherface. Yeah. Like, the grandmother is just as fucking evil. Um, obviously, Arnie, Arnie Hammer is, like, uh, uh, fucking Arlene... Ar- yeah, sorry. Arnie Hammer is actually a cannibal. Yeah. Um, which is another aspect that's sort of almost non-existent in this film. Um, very, very It's weirdly. implied. And it's implied, in, but it's in non-existent. The it's actually straight up implied that they eat Monty's legs. Yes, and then we find out in the beginning they just chopped them off. Yeah, and then but with um, like when they like attack uh, certain people in this movie, we get that like Leatherface binds the leg up in like butcher paper and mm-hmm. salts the wound mm-hmm. and ties it up to stop the bleeding and stuff, and he's hung up like a piece of meat. Mm. Um, it's weird though. I feel like if we had gotten this movie to take place over more than one day, we would see them do the cannibalizing and stuff I feel like the the dinner scene was kind of glaringly missing for me in this movie because I'm like of all the iconic things you're going to do out of a Texas Chainsaw 
the dinner scene is like the eating the of people. Scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the yeah. one that makes the movie turn around. And well, we don't get like, that in this. Oh film. shit! Now we do get that in the next movie, which mm-hmm. is a prequel to this movie, um, which I really like. They have a girl like tied to the side of the table, and they're like grooming her, like as the thing is going on. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of like that aspect. Um, we'll get to the beginning one day, though. Yeah. Great. <laughs> you have got to learn how to improv. <laughs> well, fucking skeleton, I hate you. <laughs> so I will actually just jettison, the, jettison this with um, the actual intro itself. So like, mm-hmm. we get this uh, um, uh, shake and go wig cam, steady cam of uh, the probing of the Hewitt residence and uh, all of this. This was fantastic. So how much well I was convinced of this was when I was younger I was like oh my god this was this was an was actual real. thing <laughs> I did now to no. be fair I was like I'd say what 12 13 when I first saw this movie if that, I thought it was like is, what the fuck this is, is this 20 years old it's 2003 so it's you feel so old I remember this like coming out <laughs> and all the French people think it was gonna suck because they like the original um, which it was panned, but I thought it was pretty good. It's because it was a remake, but it was the first of, like, the big wave of Plan and Dunes remakes. Which no longer exists now. Which I kind of am a little bit bummed about. I mm. don't know. Um, Think of what could have been a Hellraiser remake. Well, Ugh. we got that, you know. True, but See, it's not is, a Plan of Dunes remake. Yeah, so yeah. The, the, tri- the unholy trinity was not completed. The, 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 the grit, I will say, I yeah. do like of the Plan of Dunes remakes. Like, they are they're filthy yeah you know and that's i think the one thing i thought that was missing from the hulu hellraiser where i'm like it's not sexy and it's not really that bloody i had a good time but like i come to hellraiser for you come to hellraiser like for skinless people and sex (laughs) we kind of didn't get any of that whatever though and we didn't get it in this either no I, i i actually kind of remember this being a lot more like visceral than it was i wonder if there's yeah, a very rated cut down. that we could have watched um, i know that they did actually shoot and they set up morgan's death with actual blood and guts that was falling to the floor then they shot I it from I downwards that. i know i seen it on the special features and it wasn't a deleted scene they just fully didn't put it in the film at all that's crazy to me because i remember because i like leading up to this scene i probably haven't seen this movie in like 10 years or something Mm -hmm. and I remember him getting like hung up from the ceiling and Mm -hmm. like got it but then in this they just cut completely around it and I was Mm -hmm. like what the fuck I remember this I almost vividly remember like seeing goods fall to the floor I don't know I guess I'm just like interjecting other memories or whatever oh no they definitely did because on the two disc special feature thing which I had Uh they did shoot it they what they plan on doing was they have an actual shot of Erin which is her running back out of the house during that scene Um, and they did have uh, that shot and it was basically guts plopped to the floor not still not showing from here from yeah. his waist down just showing him you know bleh, dead cross-eyed um but that was but that was it um they didn't actually shoot the the um shall we say viscera yeah. of him being cut in half which is annoying um, for how yeah. far this movie goes in one direction they also leave a lot out yeah like, a lot to be desired like, just straight up fly off yeah which i fucking know. love they don't this was the era prior to like the overuse of CGI in horror movies but also like and it's great they finally because one thing that always actually pissed me off the most about the Texas Chainsaw franchise in general is that like they never use a chainsaw the right way like mm-hmm. he always just probes people with it and it's like no if you like swipe a chainsaw at a limb the limb is coming fucking, straight yeah, up yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know um, mm-hmm. and that scene I remember a lot I was a kid like really freaking me out um, just because it was like good and intense and I always I like still do always really enjoy a good chase scene mm-hmm. um, of Andy running through the sheets and then yeah. Leatherface kind of teleporting kind of coming out of nowhere mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like whatever I like I don't give a shit about those roles if the movie like looks cool or is entertaining and then the light just comes off and he gets carried down um, and we get to see Andy's like fingernails come completely off yeah. on the wall which we had seen set up in the found footage from the beginning which I always really really enjoy mm-hmm. that was one of my favourite aspects of that thing remake was like seeing everything that was set up from John Carpenter's 
also being there like happening in real time in that movie I love any kind of little setup like that I love the sort of characterization of each person um, in these opening scenes the the, the van kind of scene uh-huh. which is I mean obviously of course it's them backpacking across uh, to get to Leonard Skinner uh, which by the way would fucking rock can you imagine a Leonard Skinner concert that would be the fucking not after three balls, days of driving man. I'm about to fucking stink because <laughs> they've come from Mexico for being in Mexico for three days yeah um, cause passing buy, through El Paso as I started to hitch they buy two ounces or two pounds of weed or whatever and they Holy sneak shit, it they bro. sneak it past which is like that right there is t- more than two pounds of weed I don't fucking give a shit oh yeah um, it totally is also it's terrible weed because it's 70s American weed which is notoriously bad um, which is you why you probably know. need two pounds of it um, <laughs> But yeah, they're coming through. Oh my god, I'm so just stoned for this right now. <laughs> now, uh, the whole thing with Erin is that she was originally written to be pregnant yes. in this movie, which kind of, I feel like they didn't, they either didn't cut enough out or should have just left it in. Mm-hmm. Because they they do all the things of like, oh, oh no, no, I'm not thank smoking, you. I'm or like, I'm not going to drink, or yeah. like, I'm not even going to drink yeah. water, even... Um, Morgan is like, oh, Montezuma's revenge. I told you not to drink the water in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they kind of make her weirdly maternal in this. But then I feel like that actually maybe would have given her a little bit more motivation or made her a little bit like... To survive. Exactly. Because yeah. they kind of just made every once in a while, they'll throw a line in for her where she'll just go, I learned it in juvie. Or like, Big I had brothers. older brothers. And it was yeah. like, shut up. Yeah. God. Like, you're so I like, mean, like, Erin, what's her name again? Uh, Jessica Biel. She uh, grew up as America's like fucking sweetheart right up until that. She was on um, Seventh Heaven. Seventh Heaven, exactly. Yeah. She was on Seventh Heaven, and right up until that point, America had basically seen her grow up. Right. It was so, not that intense. No, it's not. But like the point being that she goes from this character to suddenly being this character. Yeah. There's a disconnect, and I think the problem as to why. Uh, her character comes off as such is because first of all she was edited bad and then good then bad then good then bad then good they make her borderline unlikable yeah she comes across as unlikable at times and then she comes across as this like I am heroic and then I'm not and then I'm heroic and then I'm not she tries to save both of them kills one of them the and way then she mercy just kills him later throws is her friend like I've at Leatherface at the end like it's just it's quite um like her motivations back and forth are very questionable she is she's a very poorly written you character know, she is she's Which just is, not that strong it's fine like if she wasn't the final girl mm-hmm. um, I almost would have liked to see her and Pepper be final girls mm-hmm. together because I liked their dynamic together the dynamic was good with or them like, I if, enjoyed that if there were, it was her and Andy or something like that because like I don't think Andy was dead dead you know, like I know he's missing a limb, but like, come on. Yeah, but he's not fucked. He's he's okay. He's, he's like finish it, finish it, and she's like, finish sure, I'll just God. stab you in the stomach. Oh, what the fuck? God. Also, that you... would not directly kill him. No, he instantly dies. From he that. Instantly it's like, why dies. don't you slit my wrists? Why don't you pull the piano forward so I can step up off of this fucking mm-hmm. hook? Instead, she just tries to lift him off like five times, and he's like, dude, just kill me, bro. Oh, God. And Every time like, he yeah, drops. Sure. And he just like gets lower on the chain. Oh, it is. I was cringing. Oh, it was, that's hard. It was so hard. Sure, you usually oh. wouldn't like that stuff. Like it didn't make me cringe in the original movie, um, but with this, I don't know. It's just because we can like see it. Like mm-hmm. we can see it go in and everything. Mm-hmm. And like I'm pretty sure we can like almost see it from the front. There's like almost like a there's like injury detail in the front as well. It's not mm-hmm. just like an, an exclusively internal thing. Um, and then with. Morgan later when we find him in the bath I couldn't remember what was that giant wound on his back was he also up and off so I actually thought it was an implication that he was also hooked as well yeah that's what I figured um and then for some reason he was just thrown into the bath I guess because well, it's right there because after he gets off he can't like he can't walk or anything like yeah, that no yeah. I get it he's been like beaten like, he also bit. comes across as was he blinded or was he just so badly in need of his glasses that he couldn't see properly? I, I Yeah, I kind of think so. Because you know he, I mean? he borderline was like... I don't know who you are. <laughs> exactly. Like, he like freaked freaking out, out. When, like, yeah. when she got there. And, and yet he's looking directly him, at her. Because she literally has to like drag him from one way to the other. And it's like, get on your fucking feet or mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of leave you here. Yeah, um, exactly. 
So at the start of the movie, <laughs> I think like an iconic scene from horror from our childhood is this opening. Yes. The With cold the open is the hitchhiker. Now, obviously, of course, again, I, I don't want to draw consistent comparisons or parallels to the original because I actually really do enjoy the dynamic that uh, the kids have with each other I really do I, I I was instantly engaged with all five of them in yeah. the van you know what I'm saying like I immediately I was just like Kemper I mean even though he's killed off straight away he's very much um, you know a, a, a psycho you know dies off in the first 30 minutes a psycho um, oh yeah yeah, yeah but no, like the, the fact that he's so strong he's the leader blah 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 you have uh, her his girlfriend Aaron you have the stoner Morgan and then you have the two sex bombs. Um, in the back I love the way she Andy goes it's like it's like destiny it's fate it's like LSD destiny. it's like this shit does not just happen I'm yeah. like girl do you have any idea what you just said yeah, the thing that does piss me off is the fashions in this movie I feel they're like they're different always... time periods did you notice that it's not the 70s at all Mm-mm. these are full, like Jessica Biel and Pepper are the most 2000s looking chicks yes. I've ever seen in my whole life yes which I do get like kind of borrowed from the 70s but it's mm-hmm. like all these like low rise jeans all these low rise skirts and like mm-hmm. Aaron's in a tank uh, with the like the cowboy hat and yeah. her jeans which are like slightly flared it's like yeah they're flared but a flare does not but a are 70s, they 70s but exactly yeah. a flare does not a 70s make mm-hmm. I feel like this movie almost would have benefited more of just having it be set in modern day because you're yeah. in the middle of nowhere the cell phone problem wouldn't have been a thing mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. it's 2003 it's like cell phones really aren't are still shit at this exactly. time exactly they're not hot, yeah. hot and popping to they the only came out now. what like four years beforehand exactly like it still would have been a thing of like like I remember phones kind of being novel like when somebody had a phone that I knew it was yeah. like oh shit it wasn't just like everybody had one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know um I don't know, or set it in the nineties or something like that. But like, I, I would have like, believed it if it was the nineties. Yeah, like I late nineties, I would have believed that. I just didn't like the seventies thing because like none of it read as seventies mm-hmm. to me at all. And I want this van. Oh, with the mad, the mad magazine. Uh, yeah, thing. and apparently they had to fight, fight, fight for the rights to have that in the film. The like, magazine, like yeah. pretty much just purely because obviously it's the mad logo. But like. The fact that, like, the company consistently went back and said no, went back and said no, over and over again, and then finally caved and said, okay, fine. But, like, and and the rights, the rights still go to mad every time. It's crazy. And see, to me, that even still could have been, like, a 90s reference, because, Mm -hmm. like, 90s is still very referential to, like, the past or whatever. And, like, there's, like, a little troll doll, and there's, like, I don't know, it just seemed like the 70s... That light. troll doll has seen a lot. <laughs> Which, I mean, like, it just seemed like the seventies light, like diet seventies. Yeah, exactly. You know, where it was like the nineties interpretation of the seventies. Exactly, like yeah. the wedding singer. Oh like, my god! 70s, yeah, where it's like yeah. I almost would have wished they like pushed right up against that. Where mm-hmm. it was like, have them be like two hippie chicks. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Pepper is like giving full Britney Spears. You know, with the like biker boot, the like a giant like a knee boot, and then like the skirts, the, and the short skirt, and everything. Yeah, yeah, the hair and everything. Like Jessica Biel is the most two thousands looking chick I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Even today, like nowadays, I've seen her on Lucifer, and I still look at her going, like, you look like you're from the late nineties, early two thousands. My other yeah. reference for her is Blade Trinity. Oh yeah, of which course. I actually love. Yeah, I don't yeah, care. Those first yeah, yeah, yeah. Movies are great. You know? <laughs> well, speaking of which, Morgan. The, the the nerdy stoner guy what other films has he been The Virgin Suicides uh, he was in The yes. Virgin Suicides I that's where I've seen him before the he's in The Ruins too he's in The Ruins Have yeah the ruins? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's a great, great movie, movie actually sick the, bitch the newest yeah um, Charlie's Angels remake which mm-hmm. I also still haven't seen oh well being a solid toad Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> I do recognize him from other stuff. He's actually very pretty. He he's a really good actor too. I like the sort of like half in, half out stoned mood he has throughout this film. It's pretty good. No, they do <laughs> make him kind of an asshole. They like, do. They make it like I don't know, they give him like a weird flip in the middle of this movie where it's like what the fuck are you doing? But they also, at the same time, try to make sure that he keeps a level head at times. Because also looking at it going like, I'm not going to this fucking guy's house. I'm not going there. That's stupid. I'm going to take the car and I'm going to get the fuck out of here. 
But at the cost of abandoning all of his friends. It's like, you're a piece true, of shit. True, I like, suppose. He wanted to leave in Kemper's van without Kemper. Mm-hmm. It's like, fuck you. Like, and that's what, like, I think it was and, my van. Our van. Yeah, I love that my Aaron like, corrects him. Yeah. <laughs> but I also love the fact that Aaron's like, no, I'm not giving you the fucking keys. And Pepper's uh-huh. like, who made you in charge? And it's like, you've been here for two days. Don't fucking talk to me like that. This is my boyfriend's van. <laughs> okay, you fucking hitchhiker. Get out of here. Well, speaking of the hitchhiker. Oh, it's so good. I remember thinking this was one of the coolest shots I'd ever seen up until that point. When I was Oh, my her. God. So, like, the whole point of it, obviously, is that she's the survivor. She's the last survivor, apart from, obviously, the baby that's being taken care uh-huh. of. She's the last survivor of the previous family that was terrorized by the, the Hewitts yeah. and, and, and uh, Sheriff Hoyt and all of that. So, like, um, the thing about it is her, like the way her trauma comes across is like instantly gravitating it's like what happened it's arresting like that you know the whole van is just immediately just like can't stop staring at her like they're they're terrified to say anything except like so where are you coming from or things like that exactly like it's terrifying and like the fact that she just instantly goes they're all dead yeah like she can't even like, like hold herself up together. Huh? They're like they're, they're like not even creeped out by this, you know. And, Who's dead? <laughs> but like I, I remember when the beginning was announced to come out. I was hyped because I thought that that was going to be her story. Uh-huh. I thought that the end of that movie was going to lead up to the start of this movie. Uh-huh. Um, but it's not. It's a good like ten years before that or whatever. Yeah, um, it's like right at the start of Nam or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, which I love. I love that idea. Oh yeah, because Arling Army is like pissed at the two boys and that because they're draft they dodgers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because he he talks a lot about like the war and it's like oh he's talking about like the Korean War or whatever you mm-hmm. know. Um, mm-hmm. and then that's like when they get in the beginning, it's like how we get like the beginning of Monty or not Monty. It's um, it's Hoyt that brings in the idea of cannibalism because he had to eat people in Korea or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I remember thinking this was just like one of the coolest looking shots I've ever seen. Um, and it's done practically yes. kind of there's like some manipulation but you literally have to because you can't literally pull a camera through a girl's head but um this... she takes out a gun oh, from, be- from betwixt her between me down there her what's gone sour um <laughs> between the thigh region i love the practicals in this shot because mm-hmm. it's like she she takes it out and she's like you're all gonna die and they're like they're going in the road and she's like no no no, go the other way um and then she takes out this gun which is sheriff hoyt's gun and um, fucking shoots herself in the in the mouth, which is not actually <laughs> trigger warning. That's the worst way to shoot yourself in the head if you're trying to kill yourself. You do it up through the chin, not through the back of the neck, because that's how you get paralyzed. Um, but she blows her fucking spine out from her mouth. But the way they did it, they like they had uh, like wind and stuff like that, and like dolly or not dollies, and like um. What are they called again? Uh, they had these uh, blood packs that were like jello. I forget the out. name of them though. Um, and the air. A squib. Yes, exactly. The air. They blew like her hair from the back. Oh, it's fucking it great. So cool. It was practically done. They did it three times. Yeah. That was the maximum amount because they didn't have the budget for anything more. And they had to, they had and to it was put so wind in her mouth good. so that her cheeks go like. Would blow open. Would blow open. Yeah. It looks so fucking cool. So fucking. And, then and she had shot. the the shot where she, uh, the smoke was coming out of her mouth. She just inhaled a load of cigarette smoke and That's just so opened good. her mouth. Fucking fantastic. But the shot that like we're talking about, which I think like if you've seen this movie, is like the iconic shot from mm-hmm, this. Mm-hmm. Is like the pull in from open Aaron and van. Camper through the back, through her mouth, through the back of her head, out, out the all window. the way out through the van, out like past the van and everything mm-hmm. it's so fucking good it's a full one shot of that entire thing and I do love everybody's reactions Aaron yeah. is Aaron in this movie Jessica Biel kind of is like I don't know I think she's kind of shit because mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of times she's kind of just like ah yeah, yeah. you know and it's like I'm not getting that you're actually afraid mm-hmm. like Pepper to me is delivering fear and Jessica yeah. Biel is kind of just okay now scream Jessica and she did the fo- the best thing about Pepper, uh, the actor, the actress, she was hired specifically for her, like natural uh, screaming. Yeah. Uh, uh, thing. She was just like the way she reacted. I I, I th- I'll I'll have a look for it and see if I can stick it up on the pod because her screams 
are just so powerful and like that's the reason one of the biggest reasons as to why she was hired for the job is because yeah. of that but I love <laughs> Kemper's reaction is just like oh fuck no it's my van yeah <laughs> where are we gonna sleep and Morgan is just like oh four hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh no this is a bad trip man <laughs> Pepper Pepper actually is even though she probably has like the least to do in this movie mm-hmm. I think she's one of my favourite characters in the movie she's uh, honestly she's she, I think she's smart the, chicken. She's the better actress. Mm-hmm. I think a good switch out in the era of Scream at the time would have been to kill Jessica Biel and have Pepper be mm-hmm. the the final girl. Because mm-hmm. it's I don't know. It seems like a shittier situation because she hitchhiked and only got there two days ago. Um, there's like no reason for her to stay around. Mm-hmm. She just does for some reason. Yeah. Um, for and I uh, like that this name. movie does become switched or it does become divided gender roles kind of wise and then um, Kemper which is like don't try and tell me that's a fucking name in the 70s I don't give a shit <laughs> what fucking parents in the 50s were naming their kid Kemper mm, and true. it's not his second name either mm. Um, but I like the fact that the girls are kind of like we can't just fucking leave her here like we can't just throw her out Yeah. and Kemper immediately does the smart thing throws all the weed away yeah and he's like right okay fine we'll go to the police um, officers please as you inspect our van which is now your crime scene <laughs> please ignore the colourful pinata filled with marijuana you just happen to come across the girl whose demise was the unfortunate woman <laughs> they also totally could have though like the only reason like it's kind of like suspect is because the pinata is like smashed open it's like uh-huh. you plausibly could have just been like yeah we're coming back from Mexico mm-hmm. we got a pinata um, except for the fact that they like have joints like in the ashtray. Oh yeah, like they that. don't. They don't. They don't make it. Um, you know. No, it's very definitely a crime scene. <laughs> like Jessica Biel like takes it off him, and she's like, "Whoops!" and like just flicks it out the window. <laughs> Ooh, um, my bad. It's like, You're a fucking narc, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Campbell, your girlfriend's kind of a bitch, bro. Um, but so Arlie Army finally kind of like gets into this movie mm. there's a lot of kind of weird geography in this town of like they where go back and forth several times between different places whatever. yeah at least in the original movie i know you don't want to make comparisons but to me it's very simple where it's like i said i felt they're, like, <laughs> like they're on the family farm like they're on their family farm uh-huh. and then the sawyers are like right over there yeah and it's just there the whole time and it's like two minutes from the road with this it's like Oh, no, you can't drive there, the but then also you got to drive there. up through the woods. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many fucking times I see Jessica Biel go from screen left to screen right across this woods and then yeah. back. Mm-hmm. You know, across the same little spot of woods. Well, and... speaking of screen left to screen right, uh-huh. they got the original shot from the Texas Chainsaw original, which was the van screeching to a halt on that oh, one yeah, road, yeah. which I very much appreciate. I love a reference like that, you know? Shot. Oh, shut the fuck up. No, it's... I'm not talking about the original. Says you can... You can... You, you can gosh... Says you. I said sequel, not originals. Um, you can gosh that all over Toby Hooper's massacre when we get to that fucking film, which I'm surprised we haven't. But when we get to it, you can gosh all over that then. No, you just made a reference to the original. The original shot is so much more beautiful. It's so much more pulled out and you get to see how there is nothing around. This is a more populated... The nerve, the gall, the audacity, and the gumption. This is a more populated Texas Chainsaw, which isn't a knock against it, but it just feels a lot less um, out in the middle of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? I feel like mm-hmm. these chicks... You could walk five minutes and get to the next place. Yeah, they, yeah, could, yeah, yeah. they could run somewhere, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but with this, uh, Arlie Army in this movie, I find him so funny, because he's so, like... His eyebrows. He's so the, the eyebrows literally curl up like this. That's how thick they are. You know he's got hairy shoulders too. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Is he human chair of the week? I don't know. <laughs> I believe that's Kemper. Oh, no, really? I don't think so. Looking at Kemper now, Kemper looks like a normal person, but like sh- like left on the line. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Like when you wash your cotton shirt and you leave it out on the line and it stretches. Uh, like Kemper left on looks the like a regular person pulled... Uh-huh. Up a little bit like this is a little bit too Mr. Fantastic for me. Wow. Um, I think Morgan is actually cool too, when he's not throwing up all over a gun. You know, shows what good you can do. Morgan, <laughs> fucking 
Um, but Ernie, Ernie is so funny in this where he's just like, um, help me wrap the bitch up or whatever like that. But then they're talking about her and then he's like, I have more respect for that girl than anybody in this fucking town. And then they go to put her in the back and he's like, get that fucking thing the fuck out of my back seat. <laughs> Stick it in the back of my goddamn yeah. trunk. And then as they open up the, to put the body, he was like, don't, don't touch my stuff. Don't exactly. break my stuff. <laughs> He's so funny in this movie because he actually is the main antagonist. And he really is. Leatherface sort of kind of, I don't want to say gets pushed to the side, but he's sort of like... That's true for the series. Leatherface has never been the main villain. Yeah, he's yeah. just kind of the mascot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's always been the family. He's a great mascot. Or the, but see, like I, uh, no pun intended, M-A-S-K. Um, oh, whatever. <laughs> that was stupid. I do like the idea of, I think it's 2013, um, Texas Chainsaw 3D, where it's a solo Leatherface movie, mm-hmm. where I'm like, just make him the fucking main antagonist. Because mm-hmm. he's barely in this movie. Yeah. Until the very end. You know? Which, uh, I don't know, they've made him, like, the opposite. I do kind of miss the cross-dressing element, because it always, yeah. it always added something It added else. much more depth to it. Yeah. It's and like, there was a little bit of, like, uh, Buffalo Bill. Exactly, because, uh, like, Leatherface is, like, the mother. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And Leatherface is just, like, the butcher at home. Leatherface is not, like, this, um, like, extrovert that, like, goes out and is actively chasing after people mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I get it's a different movie. You're separating yourself. And I, I always see him as the good idea. panicking, uh, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, Somebody's shit. Somebody's in my house. Somebody's in my house. Yeah. Get the fucking mallet out. Whereas this type make him of like idea, monstrous. yeah, like he's a creature almost. And so I gotta give get... it to the wrestler who plays him, Andrew Bernarski. Does... Oh, he does that so fucking. He's intimidating. The way like he kind of hulks over with the chainsaw in different st- I shots. I will say that it's now. Great. One thing that bothers me is that uh, now I agree with Gunnar Hansen. This now him and Gunnar Hansen had a legendary feud for years until Gunnar Hansen died, and this guy like borderline like danced on Gunnar Hansen's grave. Um, which is like super fucked up and everything. Oh, like, what's the tea there? So Gunnar Hansen was also kind of being a little bit bitter because Gunnar Hansen was not asked to be back uh-huh. for this movie in any way, shape, or form. Uh-huh. Which I think is fucked up. They should have had him in something. Um, like a background or a Sawyer or uh-huh. it, maybe the truck driver at the end of this movie. Just because it's like, he's Leatherface and he's still alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe so was Marilyn Burns up until this point. Yeah, she was because she was also in 2013. Yeah. Um... Gunnar was not happy or impressed with how he portrayed the character which in some aspects I agree because like with the the door slam and stuff like that he kind of just shuts the door Mm -hmm. it's not like it's not like furious or anything like that but I will say this guy is very 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 intimidating Mm -hmm. like he it, it gives me like Rob Zombie's Michael Myers where it's like what we had before but like on Steroids. steroids yeah you know just like a bigger more hulking like regardless of weapon dude could pull you apart with his hands exactly like you his know? bare hands could rip your whole fucking head off yeah but i just i was missing some character depth just because like leatherface is <laughs> the original leatherface is kind of like how the tea lady is talking about leatherface in this movie where she's mm-hmm. like that sweet boy and it's like in that original movie, it's like, poor Leatherface, mm-hmm. just leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you get the sense that he's, like, not all mentally the way there, and the fact that, like, he probably wouldn't be doing any of this if his two brothers weren't influencing him. Yes. You know, he He'd could probably just, been... just be... I guess they borderline like, living up... Exactly, yeah. like, if he wasn't pushed to certain extents uh, uh, by outside forces, I think the man behind the mask so to speak would be quite docile and yeah. and quite a good person to be around as we've seen in 2020 that's crazy we've gotten a Leatherface movie every 10 years since 2020 or since 2003 because mm. we've got 2013 and then we got one this year mm. um ew don't do that you mm. creep <laughs> yeah. 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 you're like mm, tell me more me with Spongebob stuff <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, in the newest movie, we've seen that he is docile when yes. he's just around people who aren't killing and aren't eating people, mm-hmm. you know? Although he is a little bit defensive of a confederate flag, but yes. Stephanie doesn't know better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like Leatherface you can be change like, him. <laughs> it is, though. It's like, come here, sweet boy, give me a hug. You know, I feel like Leatherface could be changed. 
But it is obviously, like, noted in this film that he suffers from, like, skin disease. He has got no nose. The, the man has, like, quite literally the top end of it, the, ske- the skeletal part of his nose poking out. That is, like, fucking creepy as all hell. And when you see him actually, like, take a breath, his, like, the top part of his lip doesn't exist anymore. His yeah. nose is gone. Part of his cheek is, like, very bony looking. He's got no eyebrows. Like concave in the middle. Exactly. Like, he, he's he's just Voldemort with without an actual nose, you know? It's, 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 it's um... It's very thing, but you also get the point of view from him, like outside when they're talking about, like, uh, was anyone thinking about me and my boy? Yeah. And then like he's just sitting at the outside the door, just like wringing his hands, like like grabbing the tufts of hair from the different faces that he's got put together. Like it's it's very um. Uh, uh, there are certain points where it's it, it shows him in a different light, but. Unfortunately, I think it's just not enough to create a more 3D character because it was no. touched on, but it wasn't sort of developed further, you know? Yeah, I think they're kind of relying on the fact that people seeing this will have seen the past four <laughs> movies. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I think, like, I almost would have rather have never seen his face. Or, Fair. Or the thing that always pissed me off about this movie and most of the movies is, like, I want to see a different mask every time there's a kill because mm-hmm. he's at home in his workshop. Yeah. You know, like, we get Kemper's face in, like, such a fucking cool shot. So Kemper gets kind of the, um, oh, what's his fucking name, Ed or whatever from the original movie, um, like, like just cracked over the fucking skull and dragged in. I love that blood spurt up against the, the, the cartoon oh. and that I'm going <gasps> yeah yeah. oh we that's a great the, we shot we look at the leg twitching and mm-hmm. stuff like that and the slamming of the door the very you better close it soft but um <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right but yeah he like I don't know he gets Kemper's face and this is kind of like which we see none of it we see none of the head face getting taken off we see him find the tear cut diamond ring on her beautiful little finger it's okay he was um, gonna propose to her he was which also, makes it all the just, more sad you should have just done it you should have just done it she was waiting for you to do it in Mexico and then he's drawn up and basically we're kind of like it's impl- it's implied that he's drawn and quartered yeah and then his head is severed and he's peeled off and and then Leatherface takes it into his little little matinee little you know uh, atelier just threading the needle until yeah. like they're exactly yeah it's custom <laughs> you know, uh, one of the custom clients. pieces yeah exactly yeah. I, exactly the so, house I, of Hewitt yeah <laughs> uh, um, but I love the fact that like when we see okay so the lead up to this is Arlie Army finally comes back out um, and is kind of like <laughs> just like assaulting the fuck out of Morgan Pepper and Aaron Mm -hmm. Um, and Pepper for kind of the rest of this movie after the chick shoots herself in the face is like borderline throwing up yeah she's in shock she's got like snot and spit even when like she's like like their face down in the dirt and she's just like she's coughing dirt up into her own face and it's like sticking to her and then she's got this jacket on which kind of like when attacked is just shooting at puffs of feathers I love it which I think is beautiful it it's is. really really gorgeous it's done really well I think that to me serves my like bloodlust if you will uh-huh. it's still a visual representation of what's happening to her we yeah. don't ever get to see what happens to her um, but oh my god I just feel so bad for her though because she's just like oh and everyone's like get out get out and she runs out and just falls the fuck over and then it's just yeah. this big spurt of feathers and then we can see the other face turn around and it's so clearly Kemper's face that she, like, Erin is just like, <laughs> you know? Um, she had that, she had that vertigo moment, the doom. Exactly. Moment. But it was, so this was her moment where she was like, fuck. Okay, yeah. well, like, it's, now it's not I just know. bad. I know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Um, and gets the fuck out of the van. Leatherface gives her, like, way too much time to, like, get up and get on Sure her fucking up. does, it's bro. Really sure does. He's in right in front of the van by the time she's getting out the back. She falls and it's like, oh, shit, my ankle. And then stands up, ties her shoelaces, fixes her hair, does her gloss, has a smoke, <laughs> makes a cup of tea, <laughs> and then runs. And Leatherface is still fucking miles behind her. <laughs> you know? And she it. still runs back to the house. No, she runs back to the camper van with the two... A bitter old lady brigade oh yeah yeah yeah. this is in the yeah. middle of there which i love 
this lady is so these two ladies are so creepy yeah there's something about you f like it just kind of feels like there is a I want to say a sickness to them um, like obviously one is morbidly oh. obese the other is uh, you a know skeleton. skeleton her eye sockets are dropped in the only thing that's weird though is her eye sockets are dropped in but her cheeks are full it is which it's is like, weird it is it's kind of you a know? weird uncanny valley thing almost. and I think I think it's probably the reason why she got the job I want to say <laughs> you know but like I mean to be fair she Hollywood looks like that Hollywood hires people a lot for their for their quirky looks and, and strange well, you know, her. things so I do think that like it's just done extremely well like immediately yeah She's kind of giving Diane Weist, which might actually oh sound like an insult because I love her, but like, <laughs> it's because she's got this like really short cropped hair and she just looks sickly. She looks like she has had, you know, she's been in bedfellows with cancer. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and so the other one. the kitchen with cancer. <laughs> so <in> the kitchen. <laughs> and then the other one looks like she's, you know, fucked and fucked a ham and. Just oh, what is it? After it. sex, she smokes hams. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're such a fat slut. After sex, you smoke ham. Now, after this, she was also in um, in the beginning where they use her as like, a door stopper. <laughs> and what is it? Jordana Brewster like pushes her up against the door, and they can't get in because she's up against. Oh the yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was um, great. <laughs> but yeah, the way these two ladies are talking, it's like because they're so extremely just like. It's okay. Nothing a good cup of tea can't fix. And then Aaron drinks the tea. You Ugh. fucking idiot. She's like, he's going to get in here. And they're like, he's not going to get in here. And it's like, you're in a tin can. Like, what the fuck makes you think that any of this shit is going to protect you, dude? <gasps> oh, she only died last year. Oh, no. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> Rest in peace, mama. <laughs> yeah, <for real. laughs> but, um, showed it. <laughs> well this is the part obviously she's drugged she wakes up now this is this scene that I sort of look at to be like okay this is the family moment where Jedediah it's not your uh, baby Hoyt and um, uh, Mama I'm gonna call her Mama June because you know that's from the south Luna May Luna May Luna May thank you for the correction and uh, she goes here's your pants <laughs> there's nothing wrong with us <laughs> what's wrong with you fucking people but I like the fact that Luna May... Yeah, I love May, the fact that they all kind of like... Uh, yeah, they're all like, super offended. <laughs> the fact that... And then you have uh, the uh, Uncle Morty, uh, like, a girl oh, like, maybe she'd like to stay for supper. You oh, know? But, like, the dynamic Monty, with the... Yeah. Fam Monty, that's it. Like, the, the, the dynamic in that family is just really, really fun. I, I honestly, I just, like... Even though they're evil as fuck, I still like this dysfunctional, weird it family. It is. It's kind of, like, some of my favourite part about the Texas Chainsaw series. is like, yeah. okay, what kind of cast of characters are they going to have now for the family? Mm. Or... Because you kind of get the sense in most of the movies that, like, none of them are actually related. Yes. Except for in the first move, first and second movie, like, um, they're all brothers. There's two brothers and Now, an uncle? with this leather... No, they're all just brothers. Are you sure? Oh, he's just... One of them is just significantly now, older. Yeah, exactly. Now, that older one is Leatherface's dad, but also uncle slash brother he's my uncle and my brother um, they're all brothers in that movie anyway uh -huh. and then that continues second on to the cousins. second movie now with <laughs> this Leatherface is adopted because he was found in the meat packing or the meat yeah. uh, warehouse that or like fucking cantankerous cancer baby it's, it's thing. so weird in, the, in the beginning when that happens when his mom like gives birth to him like literally on the slaughterhouse floor mm -hmm. It's like steaming. Like it's like he's a demon baby. Yeah. Like he's come from hell or whatever. Gross. Um, but yeah, so Ludame I think is sister to Sheriff Hoyt. And he calls then... her mama. I don't know, the age is a little bit... The age is a concern, yeah. But also, I feel like these it, this could very much so be like Band of Travelers together. Yeah, I like get the feeling... Kind of. Like, I was just going to say it's like House of a Thousand Corpses, where yeah. one is called Mama, one is... Uh, you know, all of this kind of thing. Yeah, like Grandpa Mama in that movie Firefly. is not everybody's Grandpa. Exactly. Like, yeah. I get the sense that 
they're in somewhat related, but they just have different characterizations for each other. Yeah. You know, but I love the fact that Luda May just tries to justify it. Uh, you know, when she goes like, you know, I know you're kind, but like, did you ever think about me or my boy and all of this? And she tries to confront Aaron with uh, this, the sort of backlash that um, that is like actually really confronted in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, where oh, yeah. you get the sort of impurities of you. yeah, you, like yeah. you get the impurities of outside the family and the influences that br- that 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 presses uh, impresses on people, right? Yeah. Um, so it's sort of alluded to that where like you know uh, we fall on hard times. Um, and I think the original reason for the way they started out was because there was a new highway or a new town built elsewhere and, and they were just abandoned. They're, I they think have something no... like that. Yeah. You see, the thing, this to me doesn't reek as, as desperate as the original does. In the original, mm. it really does seem like these people are in the middle of nowhere with yeah. nothing. They have mm-hmm. no other resources. Um, so left to their own devices for a long time. Exactly. You get the yeah. sense that like where they were working was shut down because the hitchhiker or nubbins was kind of talking about like... um oh when I worked in the blah, 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 like it, they're referring to shit that was there but then with this it's like the Blair Meat Factory is still open and in operation so like and that's what I was thinking I was like what the fuck's so, going on there exactly so I'm like people are working here mm-hmm. like obviously it's closed because it's night time but I'm like people are still working here like, yeah what the fuck is going on yeah Um. so like you don't get the sense I, I feel like that's why they kind of don't play the cannibal up or cannibalism up as yeah. much um, it's also kind of a gentrification um <laughs> Uh, sort of sort of vibe shall we say to this sort of themes because like again you get the sort of moral impurities of the big city folk coming in and then uh, the big city folk view the you know shall we say southern folk as yeah. less pure where it's, it, it's also the vice versa the and city like, folk are seen buggers. as being less pure yeah. for the same reasons because they're being morally corrupted and influenced and blah 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 so I see like the way Ludemay alludes to it is is just very smart. I like that idea that they sort of are just like we within the only family is we trust, you know. Yeah. And like you know, it's like it says the Saws family. So like I always think like that when it comes to uh, films like this, where it's sort of the outside forces uh, knocking in, shall we say, and then the family feels threatened, you know. Which is so dumb, though, you know? Like, I... Oh, thanks. <laughs> you just ruined my two-minute TED no, Talk on no, the subject. No, I understand like, <laughs> what you're saying, but with this, it's like, it it seems way less... Sorry, I was like... I'm, I'm oh, it's sorry. less prominent in this it film it than it is in like the beginning. It they have less of a reason to feel that way in this movie yeah, because yeah. it doesn't seem like they've been so abandoned or yeah. so left to their own devices, you know? Because, I mean, there's fucking cars every five minutes that are passing through the exactly. place. Exactly, like, Aaron gets yeah. left, so it's like, this place isn't actually the middle of nowhere the mm-hmm. way the original mm-hmm. one was. Um, now, can we talk about this fucking setting? This palatial, like, um, like, slave owner home. I was just about to say, it's it gives off plantation vibes. It's But that's the kind of vibe that I get, that it's like, if you go far enough back in this family's history... Mm-hmm. either they own slaves or like they, they came across part of that exactly yeah. like the the evils of the south kind of thing mm-hmm. it kind of I don't know kind of adds to it um, but versus like the old like two room shack of the old movie mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. I almost feel like the whole movie could have just been set in this house there almost didn't yeah. need to be a lot of going here because it's literally at, like an estate it's huge it's massive um, I love it and, and the so architecture iconic, it's almost brutalist architecture it because it's quite flat and four the columns yeah. and the fact that it's again like questionable lighting but the fact that it's backlit is just oh, be- inside, yeah. but it's it's but it's just beautiful like it looks though like it's smoking as exactly well, where it's, like, there's just all this like shit coming oh. off it looks great I actually got a big Jeepers Creepers vibe off this movie yes did you kind of get that mm-hmm. um where, like, the movie felt, like, hot and sweaty and, like, nasty. Everyone has a layer of sweat on them. Exactly. Like, yeah, no matter where they are in the center. Yeah. Kind of Especially Jedediah. God 
damn, that this kid, kid is like... This kid did not need to be in this movie at all. But he didn't. There's no reason for him to be here. So I will say that in um, the original script and in the novelization of this film... Remember that was? Yeah, oh my god, they were so good. Jason That's X how novelization. We met. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a novelization of this book and Jedediah actually has more of a prominent role uh, in this film in the way that he helps Aaron escape. So he does that... But unfortunately, um, in the film, it's cut out. It was never shot. Yeah. Jedediah uh, gets them out. He's like, no, go, go, go. And um, uh, Leatherface just kind of pushes Jedediah away so he can chase after him. But it's like, give him more to do or cut him out all, like, entirely. Yeah. Because he's kind of just here just to be creepy. But in the novelization, a whole different story. But then Jedediah the is sawed in half. Good. By Leatherface. Good. Cause because that's kind of almost the implication in this movie is that Jedediah is killed. Oh yeah, like you never see him after this. Oh no, no sorry, you do. You actually do see him uh, in the filling station. He's at the front of it um, in the film. So in the film he's alive, but in the book and in the original script, he gets... Uh, when I say sawed in half, I mean like uh, from yeah. left to right horizontally, you know? He, he, you know, he, he becomes a, a, a two-spirit person, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, like, he, he's basically helping uh, Aaron escape and uh, uh, Leatherface basically grabs him by the back of the head and then the saw just comes across, you know, his stomach and he's cut in half. Now, is this Leatherface's baby with the tea lady? That is a good question. Which is kind so, of vibe I get. Or is it Sheriff Hoyt's kid with the tea lady? Because she's kind of flirty. She sure is. The end scene. Yeah. Which I don't blame her. Like, Arlie Army is... Is a piece of meat. Uh, 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 <laughs> um, um, it's actually implied that the baby is part of the original family that the girl came from. No, not that baby. I'm talking oh. about Jedediah. Oh, that Jedediah. No, it's explicit that that baby is the baby from... The girl from the yeah, b- yeah, beginning. Yeah. Like, that's her daughter. Not son. I always thought it was a boy. It's a girl. Well, because he has short hair? Jesus um, Christ. And gender norms, will you, for fuck's sake? But piece of garbage fuck you cancelled I'm cancelling you from this podcast Nathan you don't even own a skirt you own exclusively trousers you ride a motorcycle you don't know how to marinate meat you fucking man you fucking homunculus knuckle dragger fucking crow magnon fucking cave dweller fucking fucking desert walker 40 days and 40 nights locust and honey eating fucking troglodyte ass fucking Bitch, <laughs> why don't you take your fucking bone club out of my fucking business, okay? Whoa. And I'll, why don't you take your fucking bone through your nose out of my fucking skirt, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you just can't take it. <laughs> wow. Um, that shut you up, didn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Did it. <laughs> Grandma, oh. let me in. <laughs> you best stay out there with them dogs till you learn how to play by the rules. <laughs> oh, I do, one aspect of this that I do love is like how how like on their shit oh, they do? are when they find out that oh, is is, is, that is it? the man but her <laughs> is and um, is how like alert they are when we find out that this um the girl is kind of like on the loose or whatever. Yes. Like she gets reported and everybody's kind of like, oh shit, okay, how do we find her? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? Um, and then it kind of happens again with Aaron. Once they find out that Aaron has kind of gotten away, they're kind of like, Wait, what, the, what the fuck do we do? Yeah. We gotta figure this out. Um, I was it, like, I love the fact that this movie is like wet as opposed to the original movie that's like completely bone dry and yeah. like borderline makes you feel thirsty. This mm-hmm. is like slimy and muddy and gross and it's raining and they, they they totally did that just to get Jessica Biel. Uh, and soaking of wet course. Top, you know? uh, did you ever think? <laughs> There's no reason for her to be soaking wet. In also, the her going through that um, uh, the the slaughterhouse, right? Bone dry when she goes in. Soon as she pulls up a shutter, lashing out of the heavens like. Girl. Also, this is another example of like her as a final girl pissed me off. Why? Because she kind of just stumbles through everything and then suddenly it's like, ah, 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 I'm over here. You know what I mean? True. And then chops the fucking arm off. 
Which I think is fucking great. I love that shot. But also, go for the head if you really want to go for anything. But then also, she tries to quote-unquote mercy kill um, Andy. But it's like in the stupidest way. Cut my fucking throat. Yeah, the sort of dragging of the... Which, by the way, I love the fact that it, like, as she got it, it sort of stopped bit yeah. by bit, which you could feel. No, she so was I really was like, crying during this scene. Really? She was like, she found it very emotional and hard to do. Which I actually do love her acting in this scene. Uh-huh. She has a lot of, like, raw kind of, like, um kind of screaming uh-huh. kind of yeah. and then she's she even holds on to his feet yeah, yeah just like like he's she's just like saying I'm so sorry all over over and over again which I respect I wish like they could powerful. have been like the last two it's like a raw kind of moment exactly mm. like I I almost and wish that there was again. a storyline of like he maybe liked her or yeah. she liked him behind Kemper's back or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. Um, cause like when when they decide to go look for Kemper it's just these two Pepper yeah. and Morgan stay behind yeah. you know which is fucked up it's like we're we're all friends well maybe except for Pepper but like we should all go you know um, but I like the idea that Andy and Aaron are kind of like a little team it kind of sucks that that's kind of broken up mm-hmm. I wish that this scene maybe came later on in the movie that we got a little bit more of them two together yeah because we have a lot of just Aaron by herself and she's kind of shit like no, I, no. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I think like had there been a little bit more depth to character, you would have sold it a little bit more. Because again, I think we actually brought this up um, with uh, uh, a few episodes ago when we talked about who was it that we thought would have was pregnant. Uh, oh, uh, in our Evil Dead episode, we spoke about the fact that our oh, main protagonist was pregnant at the yeah. time. Uh, so again, like these sort of things, like why uh, hint at? If you're not going to take it anywhere. Exactly. Why hint so heavily? Like, you could have brought up the fact that... um, I'm protective of children. uh, You could have brought up the fact that Aaron was pregnant by Andy. Exactly. And that would have been a more interesting dynamic. Yeah. Or Kemper, again, like, the fact that the ring was... You could have, like, him secretly, like, maybe looking at it down the side of the car, being like, thinking like that. The fact that it comes up out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And then it's just kind of, like, it gives you that one, oh, he was going to propose, and then it's forgotten about. And, like, I don't think Jessica Biel is shit. Um, It's just I don't think they were given much to work with. Exactly. I think, yeah, exactly. I think they were written kind of a shitty part. But, like, again, I don't think either of us came to a Texas Chainsaw movie looking for for great depth of character. But you Um, just could have, like... The, the uh, when I say depth, I'd say probably like give us a little bit of emotional depth, you a know? line or two here you and know? there. Exactly, like because if know? you just like if you're only like ever so slightly salting the meat of it, you're not going to see what I did there. Uh-huh. You're not going to you're not going to engage us as much. And I think that's why something like and this is to hark on about it, but I think that's why Hereditary did really well with that mm-hmm. because like we first, I mean, obviously we got to know the characters before all hell broke loose. Exactly. But the point of fact was is that the fa- their arcs in the film began at a certain point had their high points had their low points and had their payoffs and had like so and it like it just did really well and i don't think every horror movie has to have that but do give us something to latch on to in order to care because if we don't care then every single person exactly before they're dead like give me a reason to actually give a shit about them yeah because otherwise they're just cannon fodder like you're sad for camper but you're not even sad for Kemper, you're sad for Aaron because Kemper's mm-hmm. dead. You don't give really give a shit about Yeah, you Kemper. don't give a shit about him, exactly. They have the keys. Mm-hmm. The the way to write that is that Kemper had the keys mm-hmm. and they're stuck here without Kemper. But yeah. it's like they could just go. They could just go. Realistically yeah. it's like okay, half of you stay here, half of us are gonna go and get mm-hmm. like an actual fucking police and bring them back here. Yeah. At least with Andy or whatever like that, it's like okay, my wounds have been preserved, I'm not bleeding out, you know. Go get the police. Mm-hmm. Go fucking figure that shit out. Yeah. Don't gut me, bro. You know, I, I I just think there was some there was some questionable thought processes yeah. in the script writing. The motives are weird. Does it make it a shit movie? No, no. I still have. It's a lot still of a great this. movie. I think it's a really really good, uh <laughs> beautifully shot. It is very well done horror movie. But it just it just needs a little bit more. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give me something um, to care about. You yeah. Know? Like I was very much so looking forward to watching this movie again because mm-hmm. again I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah. But it's definitely one that I watched a lot when I was younger. And it's just over ninety minutes. Like yeah, it's, it's I think it's just uh, one one hour thirty seven minutes something like that. An hour thirty eight. Yeah. Thirty eight. Yeah. Credits. Like it was it's it was still pretty good. You know. Uh, 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 sorry, we should mention that. Yeah. Uh, 
Hoyt gets run over. <laughs> Which I he fucking does. love. Yeah, I do remember this. Like, um, where it was like, reverse and do it again. Yeah. And reverse and like, do it again. <laughs> you know? I actually do like this little bait and switch, this kind of uh, Chloe's moment. Oh, like moment looking? Yeah, where yeah, yeah. we think. It's, it, it is straight up shot as if somebody is watching from the inside of the truck. Yeah. Because um, she finds the trucker and like... They kind of bait and switch you and thinking that the movie is over because this is the original ending. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like this ending better that she rescues herself. That yeah. she's not just uh, rescued. Hold on. Can we pause for a moment? Go. Um, <laughs> and we're back. So, yeah, I love... I love the kind of bait and switch because she actually rescues herself. Now, one thing that I will say is like I don't feel like she's as emotionally damaged from this because she's she, I, she is technically our Sally in this movie even though like they don't call her that like this is a completely different group of friends or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't feel like she is even as damaged as that hitchhiker and that's no. kind of what I want is the idea of even if you survive a Texas chainsaw you're not okay she does have that moment like no don't go back to the truckers I won't yeah. go back there she does have that moment in the uh, sort of original ending, which was an alternate ending to the film, uh, it, it ends the exact same way, but there is a uh, agent who goes to a mental institution and Erin has checked herself in. So there is a moment there. It, it's that whole kind of, it's a sterile white room, she's sitting in a chair looking at a window. Yeah. That's, that, they quite literally wrote that. But I do think it was a smart move not to put something like that into this yeah, film because... Same considering like how strong she's been right up through a even into the end for her to just suddenly just check into a mental hospital and be like <laughs> i'm i'm broken and immobile yeah uh -uh, bad idea it would have just like killed my boner for this movie you know what i'm saying <laughs> I, do, I just I, I do love the like the switch out for this because like we see the baby in the the side side seat yeah, no, it's like where they're all they're all gathered. Just the cast of this movie, while we were left, are just gathered in the the gas yeah. station or whatever, um, which is so gross. It's mm. like not they're not even putting up a front to how gross they are because it's just like rancid pig heads yeah. and stuff at the, the like, piglet wiggler or whatever. Uh, uh, blue blue color spots. Exactly, like, everything is like visibly moldy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we get to see just like. <laughs> all the villains in one spot having mm -hmm. dinner or whatever just hanging out at this fucking uh, barbecue gas station slash, slash, slash gas barbecue station. slash toilet slash diner I don't know what the fuck it is <laughs> but um, we get to see the baby there and then this guy pulls up who they don't do anything to they just let him go I mm. guess or Aaron mm -hmm. is fully okay with just stranding this guy here um, and I do remember her getting away in the truck but that's obviously yep. a false memory Um which was a kind of a nice surprise because then as soon as Hoyt was kind of getting to the front of it I was like oh okay um, but yeah we see a shot inside the diner they're all outside and then we see a shot back inside the diner again baby's gone which is like I don't know it's kind of cool um, but I think this would have if she was pregnant would have given us all the more reason to be like Fuck okay yeah. that totally makes sense yeah you know um but then the idea that she's running the sheriff over and like flying all over and she like and this baby is sitting sideways in the car with no seatbelt or like <laughs> or no anything the fact that this baby is just like cool or whatever you know um, and she runs the sheriff the fuck over now I will say this last jump got me really it did I didn't I didn't remember it happening um I like remember Leatherface kind of being over and done in the the slaughterhouse I kind of yeah. there was one or two shots actually one or two jumps that actually did get me in this movie it's just it's like I don't remember this being that kind of movie mm -hmm. um, and it was when she's in this slaughterhouse where again I talked about the shot earlier it's weird editing where he's already on the floor next to her kind of grabbing at her feet we don't mm -hmm. get to see him fall in or get in he's just already there mm -hmm. and I kind of just like oh it like settled <laughs> like, what the fuck I feel like my fucking movie is skipped or something yeah um, but yeah all in all, though, I fucking fucking love this movie. Highly there's, recommend. In that butcher's, uh, in that uh, slaughterhouse, there's one scene which I, or one shot in particular that I absolutely adore. Um, is Leatherface was given the cue, do you want to uh, show your eyes or not? Hmm. And the actor decided to close his eyes. 
uh, for the moment and it's a lead up shot of him walking into the locker room and he's just holding the chainsaw idling oh is that where it like pans up to him yeah I and his he, there is the eyes are just black there's yeah. nothing like visibly inside the mask and he's just breathing heavily yeah and I think that shot is fucking phenomenal and it's so beautiful cool. shot and then there's another one where just before Morgan dies in that kind of like shack homeless yeah what the thing. fuck is that uh, I don't know it sort of came across as like a homeless shack or maybe just an old rundown apartment a thing. homeless shack um, but there is a shot where Aaron stands up and it's a load of like white uh, oh broken the, I, it I was so a... 80s I fucking loved it I, I thought it was beautiful photo of that that's definitely going up on the podcast yeah. I fucking loved it because it implied to me that another attack has gone on here has before gone. yeah it's so cool I loved it I thought it was so beautiful because it's 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 just pure blue beam moonlight yeah just striking her at different angles and it makes her face uh, like sort of warp in a weird way like every time the shadow hits her or yeah, the, the light hits her it's a beautiful shot yeah, yeah. for real I, I, you know, honestly I, it's, it's a good time this movie it's a good time you're never bored with no. it you this know? movie made me feel like I had too much moisturizer on. And it's intense. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like yeah, you, yeah, feel, yeah. you feel... You feel like me? You put too much hand cream on or something. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it just feels kind of grimy and like... Loose. Too slick. Yeah. <laughs> um, like my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I would also say I love the follow-up to this movie. Um, the, beginning the beginning was a solid... It's cool. Cause it it's was a solid sequel. 60s. Um, yeah. Which is the furthest back we've gone so far. Um, in, it was Vietnam yeah like the very start of Vietnam yeah. I think it's like the second round of like people going over because the older brother Matt, Bo- Matt Bomer is in that yeah. movie and Jordana Brewster um, I, I enjoyed it because like the thing was there was it was actively fighting back against the Hewitts where everything else was just like running away from them. you know like yeah. like most of the movies are all like let's run away from them whereas like you actually and like there's this biker gang in it that, that, that are actively one of them was a like, pussycat like, doll but yeah. she just gets shotgun shot the fuck off the bike I thought that I was really cool like a Hells Angels versus uh, the Hewitts kind of thing it was kind of cool I thought it was great like it was an active kind of versus film yeah. than it was just like the Hewitts yeah we do get a shot of Bruce, Jordana Brewster as doing like a Rambo shot coming up out of a yeah, 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 yeah. blood or whatever it's like <laughs> shut <the fuck> <laughs> You don't get to be a, a vet by injection, you know. <laughs> oh my god! It's cool. Uh, we'll get to it one day. So yeah, Texas, the Texas Chainsaw. Don't get it. Don't oh, get Texas it twisted. Chainsaw. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, two thousand three. There's a lot of very distinct Texas, Chainsaw, subtle, Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw, Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Massacre. Then just Texas Chainsaw. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure the newest one is just called Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> um, whatever. Oh god, too many, too it just many things. Pisses me off that they never called Leatherface for one with of it. them. There's two Leatherface movies. Yeah, I don't know. It just pisses me off that they never stick to like one one story. timeline or one canon or exactly. It kind of moves it's two back and forth. At the most, and yeah, then it's, it's That's done. It. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And every once in a while, we'll get something that goes back to the original and it's mm-hmm. a direct sequel to the original. It's like, just shut up. Just shut up. Seriously. Or just make <laughs> it a completely different thing. Just start fresh and move away from the Hewitts. It's true. It's or true. something. Have like, I don't know, like a tribal leather face or something. I don't fucking know. Something no, no, but that's an interesting way. Nowhere. Like you could move out from, and not necessarily, you could move out of Texas. You could move to... I don't fucking know. You could do the same theme in fucking Northern Ireland. I don't fucking know. <laughs> What's that? But like the Northern idea is that like Oscar. it's sort of like uh, a... it's like Liam Neeson is Leatherface. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you and I will skin you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just a really interesting topic that could lead down to different paths. It could do different timelines. It can do different iterations of Leatherface, which is totally fine. But Girl, make Switch it consistent. the fucking formula Switch up. it up, you know. I'm bored. I'm bored. Not at this, but it's like at this point now in yeah. the series. Oh no, though, to be fair, I did like the newest one because it was different than the rest. It wasn't the same formula. The formula! <laughs> Try anything to cancelled, bro. But it, like, Fuck off. But it was 
dumb, though. It, it was like, dumb, exactly and it wasn't even dumb in a smart way but or that's funny I, way. That's what, I, that's what I go to movies like that for, though. It's like, I'm not going in for, like, intellectual. To see how it's, stupid writers are. It is. It's stupid, <laughs> and it's fun, and it's cool looking, and we got some decent gore, and that one girl got poo poured all over. <laughs> <laughs> And we got Bo Durnham or whatever his fucking name was. Bo, the, 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 that Irish actor, isn't it? Dot, dot, dot. Oh my god, Arlie Army is Human Chair of the Week. We didn't say that. Is he? Officially, yeah. Officially? Like, yeah. officially? Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, I didn't even think of one. Well, no time like the present. Well. Uh, you should come over here and fucking marry me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm so tired. I would I would love to do a compilation of Human Chair of the Week up until this moment. Oh, we should. Oh, ew, there's a missed one every episode. Fuck's sake. Second, you have done Human 74 Week, Human Chairs of the Week so far. Look, there's always something Including this similar. one, that's 75. Fuck yeah. We're yeah. three quarters of the way to 100 episodes, bro. <laughs> what Woo. are you going to give me? What? What are you going to give me? I don't know. For it. Like a next week's episode? I don't fucking know. Like what are you doing next week? Oh, Perfect Blue. What the fuck is that? My business? You should, <laughs> you should figure that out. Watch is it. it? No, seriously, It's very tell good. Me. It's like a Lynchian kind of anime. Lynchian anime. Like if, if like Lynch did Suspiria but as an anime. It's that very good. It's like a mind fuck, bro. It is. It's kind of part Black Swan, part Evangelion. Cool. Bitch. So. Aristo, bitch, tramp, slut, whore. MV. Oh, <laughs> Dot MV. Oh, but with lovely shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been listening to They're, They're Here, Here. Podcasts. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on our Instagram so daily updated content. Bitch. Sure is, bitch. You want to go to Super Rally with me and get some food? Super value? Yeah. Who are you? It's fantastic value. It's better than fantastic value. It's super. 